Okay guys, welcome to Upfront Games, and this end of the month we decided to do two different things. Uh, the review in Google Stadia, and of course the review on Need for Speed Heat. So, the first one we're going to knock out is the Stadia review. Now there's a lot of negative communication when it comes to Stadia right now, but here's my thing. And I want to make this more of a positive video in some lights. There are still some issues, and we'll touch on those throughout the video. But everybody has to keep in mind, this is still a beta. It's, you know, pay for the equipment, become a founder, become a premier member. But they are not releasing Stadia as an open platform until 2020. So... As it came out, there was a lot of speculation, a lot of a lot of negative connotations because of certain things, and we're going to jump into those here. But what I wanted to start with is kind of what you get if you purchase the Founders Edition um, or the Premier Edition for the most part. I know they're a little bit different. I got the Founders Edition because I really wanted to um, see what this was, and really, it's not... It's not a ton of money. It's 129 bucks, and then if you wanted an extra controller, you yeah, add 50 to that, and you're good. Um, so, and and that's kind of what I did. But let's let's just jump into the what you get, and then we'll go from there as far as kind of how we feel about the platform so far. So, um, to get started, I have the boxes. Um, obviously, the the equipment is out in my living room at the moment, but um, you'll still be able to kind of see what's what. All right, so let's let's take a look at what you got as a founder. Now, for me, I like I said, I ordered an additional controller to go with my founder's edition. So um, you do get this box, obviously cool. It had a controller in it. Controllers are. Um, weighted a little bit different than the others they they seem to be a little bit heavier um but they are definitely a mix between playstation and xbox when it comes to the controller so there's that and i mean for the games you play it's it's actually a pretty nice fit um to the hand i like the ps4 controller a bunch um for me xbox controllers are a little bulky um, this is kind of in between, so I kind of like that too, but it is weighted a little bit different. It feels heavier, um, so there's that. So that's the controller piece, and you get one of those with the Founders Edition as well. Now, here's what I found funny about the Founders Edition, and of course it's upside down because I can't pay attention. Now, um, they mark it all, Founders Edition, great. Uh, now in the box, of course, we had a controller, which uh, is a uh, blue controller uh, with orange undergrip. Uh, it's kind of kind of cool looking. Um, you had the, the little manual here showing you. And it says controller on it, um, but it's showing you how to link the controller, link your TV, etc. Um, pretty simple process. Uh, the it actually all operates from the phone app. So essentially, you download the app, you put in your account information to log in there. Um, that's where you purchase and sync all of your games. And um, once you get your game synced, you can play it anywhere. So for me, like I've got the Chromecast that's working, it pulls from my account as well. But you don't actually purchase, browse, or do anything with the store on the Chromecast side. You do it on your phone. And then as soon as you've purchased it on the phone, it will go to the Chromecast and you can play it on the TV or wherever. Um, also stickers, because, yeah, 
who doesn't want stickers? I guess. Um, and then of course the regulation information. And there was a Chromecast, um, a charging cable for the controller, and a uh, a power plug for the uh, Chromecast Ultra. Now here's my thing with that. I didn't really. I work in IT, and um, I also have done a lot with AV video. Um, so I was a little confused that they didn't just allow the HDMI um, to be a little different when it comes to the power side because there's USB um, plugs on the back of most TVs that will push power. So you could have had the Chromecast and then a separate little line that would run USB power to the Chromecast itself. Instead, they're running a power adapter that comes off the bottom of the, the Chromecast and then you've got this wire going into the wall from this little itty bitty device. That to me didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, sorry, something in my eye. Um, so unboxing is great. I mean, you've got that feeling for new equipment and, hey, this is awesome. Hey, look at this, you know, feel of it and all that good stuff, right? So we're good there. So for anybody who hasn't seen the app itself, let me, let me just show you here. So we're going to go ahead and open the Stadia app. On the phone. I should do it on this side because I forget where my graphics gonna be. So once you open it, and that's obviously Destiny 2, um, and I scroll up, and there were two free games this month, so I claimed them. I haven't bought anything yet, but from the app itself, I can then go to the store, and that's where I can purchase or get other new titles, right? So, that aspect, the app itself, is kind of cool. Um, I've, let's talk about the, the platform piece. So, a lot of people were saying that, oh, well, this, there's, there's going to be lag in your right. That's, that's a known, um, inevitable thing when it comes to something that's streaming um, as a whole, so there's nothing you're going to be able to do about the lag in a fighting game or something like that, but if you're playing a standard um, adventure game or uh, some other title, your lag it really isn't going to matter a whole lot. Now, if Google decides to go um, involve themselves with every other console out there, and PC, then yes, you're going to notice and it's going to suck because you're ultimately going to be behind in competitions on multiplayer before you even started. If in fact this whole negative latency doesn't work. Um, so there's that. Now, on the other side of that, I've honestly only downloaded the free titles because there was. Nothing on there that's not really a available on another platform that I own already. So I kind of left everything alone except for the, the free pro titles because I want to see latency and all that. So yes, you can stream this to almost anything that will take an HDMI port. That being said, you have to understand a few things. Now, one being that this, if I'm going to use this on my phone, I'm literally going to be streaming data on my phone all the time. Like, and, and more data than a Netflix or, you know, something like that. So you have to be cognizant of that if you're going to use this on a phone environment. If I'm going to use this on a tablet on Wi-Fi, I don't care. 
I'm going to use it on my phone on Wi-Fi. I don't care. But if I'm going to use it on my phone and I'm on my network and it's taking up my network data, then maybe I need to know. I have unlimited data, but that doesn't mean it doesn't get throttled. It's, I mean, it's kind of a ripoff no matter what carrier you decide to go with when it comes to unlimited data because it doesn't mean unlimited. It means, yeah, you can use everything. We won't shut you down, but we're going to throttle you down about 60%. So that being said, the common sense factor here is if I'm going to use it and I want to use it on my phone, I'm in an area where I get Wi-Fi on my phone and that's how I'm using it because if I'm using it on my data, I'm going to just tank it, all right? Um, and some, some streams may not work well when it comes to the internet that you're on. That's the other thing. I mean, and it's the same with any connection. I can't just, you know, jump on um, some random Wi-Fi and, you know, they may have a limited service and I'm affected by that. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, there's not... Obviously, I'm never going to be able to do anything offline when it comes to Stadia. So there's that. Um, but those are those are some of the things you have to be aware of when it comes to the connected side. And you should get it. But if you don't, then, well, now you do, hopefully, if you're listening. Um the other thing that we need to look at now is the gameplay itself. So let's let's just talk about that. Um, I played, there was a fighter, I was Samurai Shogun, Shogun Samurai, something like that. Um, that in itself is really not my type of game, but uh, got it just to see what uh, what it would be like. It's actually pretty smooth once it loads. Um, the latency on loading, um, or the the break, I should say, is not really that impactful. If you if you do have it, you'll notice that like Destiny 2, there is a time when it first comes up and you're loading the game into the area where your character is and you're selecting your class and going to the director or whatever that it does have to load. It only takes about five seconds or so, maybe 10, um, but it does load. So there is that. The, the loading of the game itself from Stadia on the, on the front end is quick. It's very seamless. So that piece I, I really enjoy. However, PS5, uh, the likes of Scarlet, they're talking about doing the same thing in a at-home console version. So if that, in fact, happens, then, you know, Stadia might have to work on some things in order to stay um, relevant when it comes to the data streaming and all that mess. Um, the reason that I'm pretty much not going to invest in game titles right now is just because again everything on there is out for another system so if i want it i don't it on my system um but even then like the games that they're releasing that are going to be exclusive to stadia those are the ones that i want to see um i also want to see if they're going to survive so um being able to get involved in something in the beta portion is great. It's something that we get to be the test dummies for this, um, if you will. And if it survives and I'm able to keep my titles, then awesome. What I'm really kind of hesitant about is purchasing when, if Stadia does for whatever reason, go under, or Google pulls the plug for whatever reason, then I want to know that I don't have a bunch of money wrapped in it. If I think they're working on the pricing model and stuff now, 
Um, I think that Stadia would be better off as a subscription-based service, i.e. I pay you $15, $20 a month, and I can play any game I want. I can keep my saves. I can do whatever I want to do as long as it's in your library. But that way, if you, in fact, decide to pull the plug and all my games are gone, I don't care because I didn't pay 60 bucks for a title and now I can't play it anymore. Like those kinds of things are, are things that Stadia has to look at and work on. So um, I think that's a major piece that, that Google needs to address going forward. Um, but again, for for founders premiere edition if it's something you got involved in and you're super upset or you're a developer or one of these reviewers that just gets a bunch of free stuff sent to you um i think that it's worth knowing it's worth seeing the improvements because again they're they're one of the first to do it in this way and it's quick it is um it definitely still has a lot of grade A titles. It doesn't. It it's something worth seeing through. However, um, you have to know that there's certain pitfalls attached to that, and we'll see as we go forward. I'm not gonna say it's a complete pile like a lot of people have um, already because I actually look at it for what it is. Um, so if you don't like my review, uh, sorry, um, but that's just how I see it at this point. So that's it for the Stadia review of Front Games. Well, peace.